somebody that he wants to talk to about football, hmm, then you need to put your ears to your radio sets and listen. All right, our listeners out there, the person I have in the studio is someone that actually came all the way from Japan to come and enhance the future of football in Kaduna State as a whole. And I will definitely be taking him on on what he's, he's a he's a he's a Japanese Londoner. Let me just pour, permit me to use that subquet, Mr. Taki. Welcome into the studios. Thank you very much. Yeah, Mr. 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 Taki, let me hear from you. What is your mission in Kaduna? Um, I came here to see how the academy, football academy, has been launched and has been how it's been running. So, from the Football Academy, what do you ha hope to achieve from that? Um, firstly, uh, we'd like to establish uh, a good foundation for kids. And uh, if they, you know, make a big time in football, then it'll uh, contribute to the uh, community in Nigeria. So, that, that will benefit the whole country. That's, uh, the, yeah. So that far, so point. good. You spent how many days in Nigeria? Like in um, about ten days. About ten so days. Far. All right. I'm more than yeah. a week. Now, how will you rate Kaduna? Um, it's quite an exciting city. You know, many things are moving. Yeah, a lot of energy. I feel. Now, how about the footballing talent in the states? Um, I can see many talented footballers, but I don't think many people come and watch them. So, important thing is to to attract a lot of scouts from abroad to see boys based in Kaduna. Now, do you have any plans of actually shipping out this? Okay, we actually said you are looking at ways you can have these players so that they can actually come back and help their society. Now, how yeah. soon are we going to see that? Um, I think we are a bit, a little bit of a short for the fuel. So we'd like to uh, get some uh, financial endorsement. Once we secure that, we'd like to feed them. We'd like to accommodate them. So that's how soon. Yeah, we now, is this your first time in Africa? Yes, very first time. And how are you finding Nigeria as a whole? Um, I can see some places are similar to some part of London, but it's a, a quite dynamic area, I think. All right, let me take you on this now. You mm. you, you 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 are, you are a Japanese. Yes. You've lived in London and now you're in Nigeria. Compare these three cities in terms of footballing talents. Um, I can see a lot of potential in this country, in this state. But I think they are underdeveloped, so my mission is to, to facilitate everything, to ensure that everyone get an opportunity to develop their full potential. Now, uh, as an, you, 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 you certainly do know that Nigeria is a very, very wealthy country and we have wealthy individuals, but their contribution towards sport development as a tool for youth empowerment has been very, very poor. Now, can I hear from you? How is it done on your side? Do you have individuals running academies there, individuals putting their money into sports? Do you have it in Japan? Do you have it in London? Um, I, I don't personally have the... Uh, no, you have people. Do you have people doing that in Japan? Do you have people doing that in, in London? Putting their money, personal money into sports? I can see yeah, a lot of people in Japan, in London, that uh, yeah, invest in on sports. But I cannot see the good uh, equipment here. So. My mission is to to bring the investment from abroad into the football here. Now let me take you on probably the second to my last question with you. Yes. Uh, the Japanese football have been on the rise, as evident by players like I mean Park Ji Sung. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry. Is he 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 came to the league before moving to Europe. To so, Europe. Yeah. All right. Japanese football is steadily on the rise now. You yeah. been to the World Cup and sorry about the earthquake and the tsunami mm -hmm. that actually happened. That man, you have to pull out from the, from the what was it the, Arab the Asian, the Asian Cup. I mean Qatar and Japan has to pull out. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. But let's do. What is the secret of Japanese football? It has been rising, 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 rising. What is the secret so that we can apply it here in Nigeria? Um, the secret is well organized. The league is well organized and they have a big heart. Yes, that's a, that's a secret. But uh, um, previously, the big companies were running a football team. But now we have a um, private football club running not for the company, but running football for football. That's a secret for the success. All right, on a last note, in the next yes. two to three years, what do you hope to achieve with this academy? Uh, we are hoping to develop a big, big start within a few days and if we can attract scouts from abroad, we are happy to see them abroad playing.
football. Thank you very much, Mr. Tak. Thank you very much. And uh, we, 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 we hope we will see you in Kaduna very, very soon. Yes. Because here in Kaduna, we don't have earthquake, we don't have tsunami, <laughs> we have people actually having fun. Yeah, there. I feel peaceful here. You <laughs> feel peaceful here? Yes. Thank you very much for coming to Thank you very to much. Today. And of course, uh, Mo, um, Mr. Tak says you need a big heart. And that kept ringing in my brain. Of course, if you want to organize anything, even if it's in your own house, you certainly need a big heart. You see, that is one area I have to praise Yakubu Obandi. He's a personal friend of mine, and I'm not actually praising him because he's a friend of mine. But actually, mm -hmm. showed me that he actually had a big heart. I will always speak in the work of Babayaro that actually says both Imani Babayaro and Honorable Sabo Babayaro. Mm -hmm. There's certainly talk one thing: you don't have to have before you can give. That's right. Necessarily, you don't have to have before you can you can you can give. If you have the heart to give. Definitely, you definitely give because God sees your heart. So you provide in your hand mm. for you to give. Now you have to have a big heart, and that big heart is not just big enough until it propels you to give. So, Mo, how big is your heart? My heart, I can say my heart is averagely big because my giving capacity is not that high. But that is because my my receiving capacity is very very low. <laughs> well, I'm sure Mo was going to run away from that. <laughs> well, the same. Okay, folks. Um, we still have uh, three more items to take a look at, and we're starting up. Um. I don't know why he decided this way today, but we're starting with the EPL. Yeah, talking about the English Premiership, I mean, so many things happened over the weekend. Only this afternoon, Stan Kroenke actually completed his takeover of Arsenal, and that means probably the Arsenal all as and Wenger style of play might be eventually broken because the chief executive health officer of the company, Ivan Gazadis, is now going to be made the executive chairman of that of the of the Arsenal company. Now, when Stan Kroenke actually completes his take his, his take his takeover, mm. that certainly means that the powers invested on Arsene Wenger mm. is definitely going to be reduced a little bit. So many times, the Arsenal fans have actually verified him for not signing standing players mm. but they forgot him that ever since the exit of David Dean in 2003 the whole responsibility about transfers and everything now lies on the on the owners of, of Arsene Wenger okay. now even when uh, Evan Gazidis came in the American came in last season he couldn't actually broker any necessary deal and then probably Arsene Wenger doesn't just actually trust the scouting network around him he scouts player by himself he negotiates for their transfer fee and all of that but with this private owner company talking about Stan Kroenke who have taken actually four years and this is a different takeover from other English takeover mm -hmm. the Glazers came from nowhere and bought over Manchester United yes. uh, the Arabians came over, Shaq, Sheikh Mansour El Kaladun came from nowhere and bought over Manchester City. Roman Abramovich was actually flowing over from, from uh, Russia to go and buy Tottenham Hotspur before stopping by and then buying Chelsea. Mm. All these men just get crashed into this company. But we're talking about somebody that has been investing in Arsenal over the past four years. So definitely Arsenal actually on the right footing. But that has to be done strictly because on the English Premiership front, even though they won convincingly over... Blackpool by three goes to one going by the scoreline. Mm -hmm. It wasn't still a convincing a, a convincing display. You have to question their nerves and their frailty, especially whenever the opening are able to, to score a, a goal. And yes, Lehman was very, very lucky to have remained on the post on his return. That was his 200th match for Arsenal having retired and can return from retirement just two months ago. And I found out one thing if he had got sent up in the build up to the Blackpool goal, Robin Van Fasti said he would have been the one to go into goal post because Manuel Amina picked up a knee injury during the war warm up. So if he had got sent off by referee Joe, Joe Masson, there was nobody that would have gone into the net apart from Robin Van Pass because there was no goalkeeper on the bench for Arsenal. Oh now, that's, now that certainly typified the kind of season they are having. For Manchester United, I think with Nani and Valencia, that old balance of having Cristiano Ronaldo and Carlos Tevez on the edge and then with Rooney in the middle years ago is certainly coming back. Now we saw how Valencia was on the right, Nani was on the left, and then you have Torres, you have uh, Rooney in the center. Uh, sorry, Rooney didn't, uh, didn't actually play. Mm -hmm. You have Babatov and then you have Chicharito playing in the middle. Now this whole thing boils down to one thing. You have pace on the left, you have pace on the right, you have intelligence in the middle, and then you have a fox in the box in Javi, and then he's talking about Chicharito in the middle. Now he finishes in typical predatory instinct, while the man called Dimitri Babato finished with style and aplomb. Now that, that, that is a perfect mix. And that is all you need to definitely run away with the English Premiership title. Even though they are seven points away from Arsenal, I still tell you this, it is still Manchester United title to lose. Because over the running, they have shown that they have the more character, the more steel, and then the more nerve to run out the remaining seven games better than any other team. And then for the Chelsea team, I think the argument should be buried by now. Between Drogba and Torres, we all, we all saw over the weekend who deserve the play and then who deserve to sit on the bench. Now, whenever Fernando Torres comes against a defense that is rigid, the defense that refuses to move out, he actually found it very, very tough because he's technical and then he's skillful. But in DJ Drogba, you have a bull. 
Now the, yes. the the Chelsea team is full of so many many matadors. You have you have so many so many many beasts in the in the in the Chelsea team. But I'll tell you one thing: there's only one top dog, and his name is Didier Drogba. He hustles, he buzzes, he pushes opponent, he puts his body in the line. You can see how he was creating chances out of nothing. That is one thing that definitely make him a stand out among all Chelsea's attacker. But this season is looking like it is not going to be Chelsea's own. But they still have the Champions League to look forward for the for redemption and qualifying for next year's Champions League would definitely mean like a trophy to, to, to them. In other matches, the Nigerian forward was as well. Then we talked about scoring 15 goals this season. Already he's on 12 goals, and I'll tell you one alarming statistics: most managers would have been biting their fingers because this man was actually bought on the cheap by West Brom, a team that is definitely a yo-yo mm. team. They come up, they come, they, they, they go up, they go down. They only retain their premiership status once after once after a year by coming up. Any year, anytime they come up, they go down again immediately. They've only done it once. They came a year and then they spent two years in the premiership before going down and then coming back up straight up mm. again. I'll tell you one very thing, Osaze or their wing is Nigerian inform attacker at the moment. But you have to ask yourself one one very good question. Mm -hmm. When you talk about Chelsea, you talk about DJ Drogba. When you talk about Camero, you talk about Samuel Eto'o. Mm -hmm. You talk about so many big clubs, you talk about so many big African players banging the goal. But then, Osazo then in Nigeria, most informed attacker in Europe, plays for which club? West Brom. That's yes. certainly typified our football. Well, don't be discouraged. More to criticize. And of course, if he talks, well, hmm. check it out. It could be a real fact. And let's go see what's happening in the Syria. In the Thailand Syria, even though Napoli and Inter Milan convincingly won their match over the weekend, Inter Milan bounced back to winning ways with 2-0 victory over Kiev, and actually saw Napoli running the rule over Bologna. For for AC Milan, if they don't win the the Scudetto, it will be very very suicidal. Talking about if they don't win the Italian league, it will be very very sad because they, they defeated Fiorentina, they defeated Napoli. They defeated AC Milan home and away. They defeated Juventus. The whole top team that supposed to actually cut them in their head. Mm. They defeated those teams convincingly. Now, the only nemesis I'm seeing that will definitely make them not win this, this league has to be Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Wow. Forget the fact that he has only won Liga two seven consecutive times. Yes. He did it with Ajax. He did it with Juventus. He did it with Inter Milan. He did it, sorry, he did it with Inter Milan, quite correct. He did it with Barcelona. And he's on the verge of doing it now with uh, AC Milan and there's a myth that wherever Zlatan Ibrahimovic go will definitely win the title but then if you're looking at Zlatan Ibra Ibra Ibrahimovic he, he, his, his disciplinary record is certainly the difference between AC Milan winning their first title, their first Italian Serie title in seven years or losing it now the whole idea is about he has been sent off three times this season now he got sent off last weekend again and that meaning to the fact that they have six matches to go in the Italian Serie A he might be missing, he might have up to a four match ban Oh. Now, whenever he gets the format, I mean, he only play two of the last matches. Now, what becomes of the team that actually relies on him most, mm -hmm. mostly? Even though, over the course from January to date, he has scored just one goal, and that goal was actually a penalty. But I'll still tell you one thing. He's no more this Latin Ibrahimo we talk about, where I remember when earlier this season, we were actually saying, the AC Milan team is to give it all to Zlatan Ibra, mm -hmm. Ibra, mm -hmm. Imo, Vovic. It is no more the same way he has been. His form has not been so consistent. Bans and all of that, suspension and all of that. But I still tell you one thing: he still give them an added option. He can hold the ball, bring others into play, distribute the ball, and then do it perfectly well. In Napoli, the Napoli team, they are the only team that looking. At, I told you sometimes around last year mm. that the, Nap the the team from Napoli, backed by Edison Cavani, their coach Walter Mazzari, names like Ezekiel Lavezzi, names of Marek Hamšík, they've actually evolved slowly but surely. Now their evolvement is certainly going to threaten. AC Milan and Inter Milan dominance, if only they can maintain this over another season. Lazio have done it, I have done it in the past, but they went down as fast as could actually say Jack Robinson. Mm -hmm. Now we're hoping that Napoli can actually retain it because they are, they are a very, very traditional team in Italy. Remember Diego Maradona playing mm -hmm. there for some time. And now with Edison Cavani in Marekanji, in, in Ezekiel Lavezzi, and then in coach Walter Mazzari, they are certainly one of the strong contenders for the Serie A team, especially when you look at the fact that they lost three points behind AC Milan, but their Achilles heel too would be the fact that their last two games in the league are against Juventus and against Inter Milan. That will actually rock their boat a bit, but before then, I'll tell you one thing. AC Milan can still afford the luxury of losing one match and they're still winning the Scudetto title. Mm -hmm. The same cannot be said about Napoli and about Inter Milan, but by and large, it is still AC Milan's title to lose, if and only if Zlatan Ibrahimovic will prove to be the Zlatan that wins the league wherever he goes to. All right, I'm sure you're getting uh, more and more excited about what we are telling you, but I would say don't go away. Still hang on because we have one more message to take.